Hey guys, back to doing video number two on how to broom an English Angora with no experience. This time we're gonna use Piper. Piper's about six months old. Last time we used Harley James and she's about a year and a half old. Um, I promised that I would do one on each of my girls. I have three so you can see the difference in personalities and um, just the challenges between each bunny that it takes when I'm grooming. I do wanna start by saying I have three rescue parrots. If you hear some noise or talking in the background, it's gonna be one of my three parrots. This is actually Yoshi behind us video bombing as we speak. So my last video, I covered quite a bit and I'm just gonna kinda of highlight and go quicker through this one. I'm gonna do this video in real time. It's gonna be a long video like the other one, but I did that because there was a comment made to another video uh, in one of the groups saying, could you please do it in real time? Because they did it in fast forward. You guys can choose to fast forward through the repetitive parts if you want, but at least this way, it gives the person a true start to finish time. Um, sorry, got hair already flying everywhere. So um, I've had bunnies now since November. So what, roughly eight-ish months. I've only been grooming now for about seven of those months. I can remember when I first got them, I was incredibly intimidated. My whole purpose for these videos is not because I know how to groom and not because I'm good at grooming. I'm not by any means. If a groomer watched this, um, she would probably be mortified. But anyway, my whole purpose again is just to get folks to a starting place. I can remember being overwhelmed at how am I gonna groom this animal? I was scared. I was scared to just even start somewhere. I have people ask me a lot, do I do the groom? In my experience, yes, I do my grooming now. Never taken a grooming class in my life. Matter of fact, I'm a retired firefighter 24 years, so zero grooming experience. So Brandy is who I got my bunnies from. She owns Finch's Fluff Rabbitry. Amazing, amazing bunnies. She was kind enough when I got the girls to come and help me groom and learn. So when I was watching her, one of the things I took away is how calm she was. It didn't matter what was going on with the bunny, uh, what they were doing, how many times they moved, nothing faced her. She was just, she was so calm. And I thought, you know, the takeaway to that is to incorporate that as I'm learning and as I get better at this. So that's what I do. I groom by opportunity. What do I mean by that? A professional groomer has a technique where they probably groom in a certain way, start to finish. I am not that professional groomer. So what I do is I just start somewhere. I typically don't groom the exact same way twice. And if a bunny gives me an opportunity to reach a place that tends to be a difficult place, I'm gonna stop wherever I'm at on that body and go to that area. Even if it's 10 seconds, five seconds, I'm gonna take it. So that is kind of uh, what I mean by groom by opportunity. Um, I'll be kind of jumping all over the place, uh, doing what Piper's going to let me do and depending on how she's acting i'm going to do my very best to keep this area clear away um, and stay from away from the front so that you can see i'm going to just quickly go over what i use i have a portable grooming table nothing fancy it's like 100 bucks on amazon i have a wooden box that's it that i set on top just to give it some height memory foam bath mat from walmart and I use a blower that I got off of Amazon, 60 bucks. Again, I'll post all the links to these. And I use a flea comb around the ears. This comb I could not live without. These little pins right here, they will spin as you're using them, so they tend to go through the mats a little easier, and I think it's less painful on them. Slicker brush by Doggy Man. I don't use it a whole lot. I do use it to kind of fluff the coat back up a little bit through the groom. But other than that, I pretty much stick with the comb. I have cheap scissors. This is the curb scissors. I will put a link to that. It's what I use the most of. I do, however, switch between the straight back and forth. I did splurge and ordered a nice pair of grooming shears. So I'm gonna try doing some of that today, but I may end up going back to my other ones, which I'm much more comfortable with, so we'll see. And I am going to also do another video of belly, legs, and nails 
with two people. Since today I'll show you what I do that when I'm alone. But the next one I want to do so that if people need help and they have that help available, what it would be like having an extra set of hands. So I'm going to do that one next. All right. So uh, as far as grooming, I started out trying to do it in my lap. That didn't work for me. They wanted to constantly run off. They didn't want to stay put. They didn't like it. And once I realized when you put them up, you know, on a stand or something with height, they're going to stay there. It's um, much more convenient. I feel like if you're not having success trying to groom, it may be that you may need to change the way you're grooming as far as what you're grooming on. So I'm going to start by blowing Piper out. Like I said, Piper is going to be the one that's the hardest of my three. This is the one everybody loves, loves, loves. Look at that sweet face on uh, Facebook. And uh, so that's why I chose her. And again, I'm not a professional groomer. So this is just a technique that works for me. As I do my scissoring, please know I did not start out this fast. Please, please, please don't do blind cuts if you don't know what you're doing or if you're not comfortable. I'm still a work in progress, but repetitive grooming is what gives you your confidence to move forward. So I hope this helps somebody just take that initial step to just try, just start somewhere. Because once you get past that, I feel like things flow and get much better. You ready, Piper? Look at that sweet girl. All right, sweet. So I'm gonna blow her out. tell when I turned uh, Piper over just now that her bottom stays um, a little bit dirtier. I think it's because her the way her hair grows in and she's so thick. So I do keep her groomed in her private areas closer than I do my other ones. So I'll be doing that too. So after I blow them out, I do take that slipper brush or the comb. I, sometimes I start with the other one and I just kind of just start, start getting that fluffed up some. The last video that I did, there were some lighting issues, and hopefully this time I closed the blinds a little bit, so hopefully that'll knock that glare off. And I also, I don't groom the same way twice. I have pretty much the same concept of what I'm going for, but I do try new different things. Um, with the bunnies and as far as looks and that kind of stuff on their face and sometimes I like it sometimes I don't and if I don't grows back it's hair okay so do her little cheeks I am still very intimidated to do certain things and I am not one to shave all the way to the skin that is just intimidating to me but i also personally just don't care for that look i love the puppy cut i work from home so i am able to um, take the time to do that so i groom my girls about every three to four weeks and keep them in that real sweet puppy look in between that um, I don't typically have to brush their coats and stuff out as much, but I do keep up with their ears and their feet in between those weeks just to make sure that nothing's getting too tangly. Because it, you're going to get, even with that, you're going to get uh, some small mats. 
All right. Ready? If you're a groomer watching this, please don't judge me. All right. So I'm just going to start somewhere. I typically just find a place on the back and, and just kind of start. Let me grab my trash can. I keep a trash can by me. scissors. I think I'd rather get a little bit more comfortable with the other ones before I try to use them all the way through. So I just, I typically start back here and I let her grow out pretty good. She's pretty thick. So I did notice when I went back and watched my other video, there were times it looked like I was um, probably cutting close, but the fur was still so thick so it may have that look as you're watching it but I still keep a decent little coat on mine so I'm not right up next to the skin now those who want to shave I completely understand that um, less maintenance if that's your thing by all means do it I am just definitely intimidated to do that type of clipping so when I do use my clippers I don't use a guard as a general rule when I do their uh, private areas or um, their tummy, I do try to get a whole lot closer. The shorter, the better, but not shaved. So another thing is you would be amazed at how much you can do in the tummy area, in this area around the back that gets really thick, it seems like, compared to other places, just in the upright position. And I'll show you what I mean by that. And again, I didn't start this fast, so um, just take your time. If you're not sure about the cut you're fixing to make, don't make it. Don't make it, it's not, it's not worth it. So I'm just taking, taking off pretty much like the, the top where I still have a, a nice little base. Being really good today. You're being really good, sweetheart. All right, so. So when I said you'd be surprised how much you can get, you'll see me pulling up a lot like this, and you'd be amazed at how much you can get right there by their feet, at their bottom. And you'll find longer pieces throughout there when you go back and do that. So I do tend to trim a little bit extra in through this area because it does get so much thicker, it seems to. When I'm anywhere around this tail, I make sure I have the tail in my hand and it's accounted for. It is easier when I'm able to just walk around her but then you guys wouldn't be able to see, so do the best I can to stay out of the way. See that groom by opportunity? She's giving me a little bit more space right there, so I'm gonna take it right there. There she goes with this too. Now, I know how thick she is, so like I said, you're not gonna be this fast, so when you see me like jump into other areas, I know the space that I have between her coat and her skin. So, until you get confident with that, go slow. That's another area right in here that I find that gets like super, super thick.
sometimes you'll see me flip the curved part around and, and go this way. Sometimes I do that. Professional groomers make it all look so easy. I'm getting better. Just by no means is a professional way of doing it, but it is a way that works for me. Everybody absolutely loves Piper. I think it's her coloring that everybody loves so much. Sweetheart, you're being a good girl. She's still really thick. I'm not sure on the video if it looks like I am close, but I am not. Another thing you'll see me do a lot of is, uh, a lot of times you'll see me doing this with the scissors. I'm just kind of pushing that fur around, but it also lets me know still how thick she is. Um, so you'll see me doing that a lot, especially once I start getting in areas that are getting closer to being done. All right, there she goes. I'm gonna take that minute and take that right there. change over to my straight so I because I can't see too good where that curves going see how thick that still is plenty of space you'll see me do this a lot as well You're being so good today. What's going on? You are being so good today. Let's 
stray cut pieces out of these ears. She goes. I'm gonna take that second. <laughs> so see how she's raised up. So the way I'm cutting right now, you probably can't see that well, but I'm very confident in that I am within a good amount of thickness on there and not close to her skin. Thank you. Oh, there you go. Sometimes I've also found that if, if I'm trying to get somewhere and I just stop a minute, they seem to naturally want to kind of start grooming in a minute or so, and I take those opportunities to get in those difficult areas as well. You're doing so good, sweetie. Yes, you are. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Straight. See how long that is? So what may look like close to the skin on video is not. When I was trying to groom the bunnies at first in my lap, I think a bulk of my stress came from them constantly trying to get up or run or didn't want to be there. And that really added to my frustration. But once I started grooming up high like this, that was a game changer. Long ears are right there still. <laughs> Got hold of her tail. Getting a little bit closer there. She's still so thick in here. Pulling up to try to get into some of this belly area.
see how long that was that I just pulled out. So I still have quite a bit there. So when I cut nails for the first time, I had myself so stressed out, thinking how in the world am I gonna do this? That was a big nothing. I'll include that in that next video. I got myself worked up over nothing. She goes, I'm gonna take that minute right there. Again, I wanna make sure I keep saying it. She's still very thick right there. I am confident that I am not near the skin. Also, the tips of these scissors are blunt to reduce the risk of anything happening. There you go, thank you. Thank you, sweet girl. Here, how about this? Come here. <laughs> Thank you. So it looks like I'm cutting blind in there because you can't see it, but I can see it. And I am well within limits of a lot of fur. Hmm? Let me see that for a minute. Right. So every once in a while I'll stop and then I do take the slicker brush and try to fluff up the coat so that I can trim a little more even get kind of a length out the long stuff let's see how much see how much just came out right there we'll go this side tail. So I'm going to trim that little place right there. You're such a sweet girl. And here I told you guys she was my hardest one. Look how good she's been. <laughs> Ethel is the one that I will do next. That was one of Brandy's show rabbits, and her coat is 
beautiful and she is the sweetest girl. I'm just some of these places that got brushed out. I'm just kind of evening them back up. And I'll show you how I use my clippers to kind of get that smoother look. They always look a little bit choppy when I'm done um, because I don't use a guard or anything. But usually within, um, usually a week, but if, if I did take them shorter than a norm, then maybe about two weeks. That's when you, they have that look that you see them when I have them on Facebook where they're just like big fluffy clouds. Okay. So good, sweetie. She's letting me get to the inside of her leg on that one. Let's see where right there, I'm gonna take that. area right here, pulling up, and I've got her tail, Switch to my straight because I can't quite see where the round part was going. The curve in the scissors, rather. See how thick that still is? And sometimes after I'm done grooming, like the next day, I'll find places that the hair didn't get trimmed quite short enough. And I'll go grab my scissors right then and I'll just trim those little places if they're just laying around. Uh, one thing I can tell you is when it comes to grooming them and especially when you get to the face, you could stay there for 10 hours. You just end up trying to always perfect it. And as a matter of fact, uh, sometimes it's better to walk away um, that's when I tend to do cuts that I don't like when I just keep on trying to do something. And But again, now you can't see, but I can. It's me. Um, that's when I seem to get short and too short in the face to where it's not quite the look I was going for. But I still look at, at pictures and um, I actually, from time to time, pull up some videos and stuff just to try to rewatch things that other people do that maybe could um, make things a little bit easier or better or more proficient for me. I wish I could go in the order of like the way a groomer does it, but that just doesn't work for me. There's one YouTube video out there. I think it's a four-part series about 
puppy cutting the angora. She is a groomer. And man, she, I mean, she literally makes it look absolutely effortless. But that's not me. I could never get the result that she got. She had a beautiful, beautiful bunny. So she's, she's pretty choppy. Um, I will be going back and, and, like I said, doing some more scissor stuff, but I'm going to go ahead and move into some of the, um, doing some of the clipper part. I use the Gimmer clippers, which I did not unplug. Let me go grab those. Sorry about that. I used Gimmers. I did try ordering one of the very expensive pairs and got the whole guard kit separate and stuff. I found that they didn't work as good as the, what the Gimmers, these I think are like 30, 35 bucks. And one thing I have found when I have used a, a guard, which is only uh, a, a few times, is I don't have success going through this wool as thick as it is when their hair is long. So when I did do Carly James in that video, I got her cut down a little shorter and then moved on to the guard, which I still find difficult to move through the fur. But, so I turn it on, you have the, it can, I twist it where it's all the way out. There's no extra guard or anything. Sometimes they'll move and it'll shave a, a little section out that's not gonna be even but that's just the way it goes. But this, I pretty much, when I do this, I just pretty much take my scissors and I just do a skim. So you can see, I just kind of skim over the coat to try to even things up. And that's how I keep from not shaving, but still getting that, that look that I'm going for. You can see that I'm taking off just a little at a time. But you, be, you may be one of those people that you can't groom yours every uh, three to four weeks and you want to go shorter. So I understand that. And they still have some of, somewhat of a choppy look, but it does smooth them out some where they, they look more like they uh, do when they first start growing it back out. Just a little bit. There we go. I'm going to bring them in again because I kind of liked how that was a little more consistent. So I have them turned all the way in. I told you I don't bring the same way twice. This is where I would usually walk around her, but I'm trying very much not to block your view. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
We have our tail accounted for. see how long she really is there and I'm not I don't strive for any type of perfection when I get into the areas around the, the stomach and that kind of stuff I'm not looking for the shorter the better without shaving them is good for me I do like to try to bring the clippers in around their neck because I do find that that's another area that's like really really thick People talk about um, that the armpits is hard for them. That's one of the things I do when they're in that upright position is when I have those opportunities, like with the clippers and stuff here, I try to go ahead and catch those little areas that are harder to get to when you're holding them. I'm going to give her a break from that, and I'm going to move on to her face a little bit. So if I trim her face down, I think I'll be able to see her neck a little bit better. This out of the, way. the face is still the hardest for me. Um, I pretty much have a, a technique I like using around the cheeks, but as far as like on the top of the head, sometimes I just cut different ways. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I don't. But um, that part I, I still like to play around with, but I'm going to keep her um, the way everybody is, has seen her recently on Facebook. And I'll use a flea comb in a little bit because it gets even some of those finer mats. That are really okay, so I'm going to make sure she doesn't have any mats in her cheek. Yes, we are. And I have found that in those cheek areas, like underneath here, they do 
tend to get some mats. So I try to take my time to make sure that there's not any left there in that area. So I've pretty much got her. This is gonna be a little bit challenging trying to make it where y'all can see of me not getting away. So I have her pretty much combed out to the sides, the top kind of combed back right now. Definitely round scissors, or sorry, the uh, curved scissors for this. I usually start right about there and by the ear. And then I kind of do almost like a half moon as I'm coming around. And I have found that under here in this area, there's no need to leave a lot of that in there because the puff, that cute look is still on top. So I tend to cut a lot of that area away. Okay, ready? Come on. So I tend to start closer in at the ear and then I kind of like fan out. I don't worry about the whiskers. I do cut the whiskers. Let's see if I can get you a better look of. There's still a lot of thickness undercoat here, so I'm going to take as much of that. Oh, sweetie. And it's going to take a few cuts to get everything evened out. Maybe that'll be better. So I'm going to pull up and I'm going to get rid of all that longer stuff right there. Because they don't have to have that to have that look on their face. Definitely a little more challenging without being able to walk in front of her. Where's my cousin? Let's do this. <laughs> Did you do a big yawn? Okay, she's got her head up. I'm going to take that minute right. <laughs> Can I have that back, please? Grooming by opportunity right there. So I'm getting underneath some of that again. I know on a lot of um, grooming videos and stuff, they use blenders in that area. My kit came with blenders. Um, I think that they just weren't enough quality of a, a blender to even work. I found them very difficult to, to work with. So, come here, sir. come here, mm -mm. no kitty bed, come here, come here, hey sweetness, get rid of some of that. I also, um, in the, in the front of the face right here. This little area right here. This might be up too close. Bear with me. 
trying to make it where you guys can see as best I can. All right, sweet girl, you ready? There we go. So I'm going to take this side. So I'm just going to. So this little place right here in the front, those places, I come straight across in that front when I when I get those. <laughs> so, cutting but I'm still following that same arch I'm going to try to get this book right here out of here hang on sweetie so you can see that it's it's not an easy task for me either but I just I stick with it I typically can get my girls done in uh, a day. There are times when I've, I have stopped and finished them the next day, and that's okay. Awkward side for me to cut here. There we go. I don't know if you can see in the video because I'm not looking at it, but I'm kind of following that rounded path. Trim these fronts. Okay, so I'm going to pull it forward. I'm going to brush them forward now. Kind of just clean up underneath. Here you go. I need that little piece right there. Good girl. All right, she's giving me some opportunity. I know she's very thick right here, so it looks like I'm cutting blind, but I can see. So you see how much of her chest, just in those grooming opportunities, I call them, that you can do. Again, I'm using my scissors to still confirm that I have plenty of coat. And I can't even emphasize enough the difference it made when I put them up on a table that was that was a game changer at least for me got my rounded part turned down this is still pretty thick in here you may not be able to tell but it is just set her head up there you go can you do that again for me, sweetie? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the face now. Okay. So, I had her brush forward, just kind of cleaning it up a little bit. Making it straight across right there. And brush her back out. Just straight out to the side. Back. And I'm just going to kind of like almost follow a circle with her. Some people cut 
the ear furnishings, I think that that's what makes them a thousand percent adorable. So I like to, I like to leave mine, brush it forward. I'm just gonna kind of clean this up a little bit right here. Got those pieces. Mm, don't move. And I tend to take some of this area off right around the eyes. Almost almost like a, a V. Definitely harder to judge without being able to walk directly in front of her. But anyway. So I kind of, I have the gist of, of the shape that I like. Um, come here, come here. We're getting here, sweetie. I'm just going to. Trim some of that fluff down so it kind of looks proportionate, I guess. see how she has that like the circle going around her there so that's pretty much what I do for the face if, uh, if I don't watch myself I'll sit there and cut for 25 more minutes so I typically um, would stop and comb or brush out a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and and if I did it would just be to continue the evening up the to even up everything in the process but I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I do the area with her feet and her back, or I'm sorry, her feet and her, uh, her belly. So I leave them sitting on the table. I find that that's just the way they cooperate the most. And sometimes I'll even hold one of their, their paws. And I just make sure. And like I said, I keep up with their feet and behind their ears in between their grooms. Grab this one. sweetheart okay so I have her in this position where I can see her feet really well so it's a good time for me to shape around her feet still kind of leave some puff now on the inside when I was telling you that I do like it shorter because you can't see it and it's just less area that can get matted When you start grooming um, around their privates and stuff, just be extra, extra careful. I still find myself moving quite slow, um, just to err on the side of caution.
I do cut the bottom of their feet just a little bit, but not a lot so they have that, that nice big pad to protect against sore hawks and stuff. If you had two people, it's real easy to be able to take their leg and extend it. And you really are able to see close to be able to, to cut. All right, so I'm gonna turn these back where they're, it's not all the way down. So this is, I find that they feel the safest like this. Same thing, I just kind of start. She's pretty thick, so I'm gonna move those back to where it must start it. And I just keep, <laughs> I cut and I just keep trying to blow the fur out of the way. And I do have to keep her cut closer right around her tail area than my other two. This is kind of in that armpit area. Be careful there. See, I've got her leg right here so I can extend it some to see better. Just skimming right here just to kind of even it up. Just kind of getting some shape to the feet. Take this in closer.
just kind of trimming back here on the heel. You probably don't have a good a good look, but I'm just gonna take my time. You can see where I keep stopping and making sure that I have what I need space-wise between skin and the fur. that armpit area right there. Okay, same to the other oh, oh, same to the other side. I know we're hopping around, but I find it so much more stressful when I'm trying to keep them in one particular place versus just moving with them. And if you guys come up with ways that you have found that work really good, I still get on and I watch videos and stuff just to try to become better. So. By all means, put videos out there. It's definitely more challenging not to, to do it without walking the view. Opportunity right there. straight shape up the front leg a little bit Thank you. 
Thanks, Ivan. There we go. Here's that groom by opportunity again. I know I keep saying it, but you can't see exactly how I'm viewing this, but I am not cutting blind. See that little piece right there she's giving me? Can you do that again? Can you do that again, sweetie? The tail, I just brush it out and then I hang on to it and cut the tip off and then I just kind of round it out after it puffs back out. And I know that I am nowhere near that little tiny tail. done sweetheart we're almost done so there are still some places that you know need tidying up but um, I just keep working at that but I'm gonna do another check on her face make sure I like that I promise not to get stuck on it I can spend two hours on the face if I'm not careful. A little bit more of that bulk underneath. <laughs> hey, sweetheart. good. Piper, you're too adorable. You are too adorable. Come here, sweetie. Come here. Come here, Pat. Let me look one more time. Uh -uh. Come here. Come here, silly. Come here.
say, there I go. And I'll keep tidying up a little bit more and stuff, but that kind of gives you an idea of my routine. She did really good, and this is the one I told you guys gives me the most trouble. Look how cute you are, Piper. Tell them thanks for watching. Ethel will be coming next on the next video.